The biceps tendon represents the starting point for most ultrasound assessments of the shoulder. It's an intra-articular tendon and therefore provides a fantastic window to the glenohumeral joint and, as such, the rotator cuff. But I think there are a number of overlooked and misunderstood aspects to its assessment. These are the two images conventionally taken. We see a small amount of normal physiological fluid within the sheath of the biceps, both in short and long axis. But we need to ensure that we assess the tendon more proximally and down to the muscle bellies. With tendinosis, for example, we will see these changes manifest proximally at the level of the rotator interval, generally in the form of focal thickening of the tendon with or without delamination splits. This is often accompanied with osteophyte type formation at the bicipital groove, producing an hourglass type tendinopathy. With this, we'll see an excessive amount of fluid within the sheath, often with some synovium and neovascularity. And this long head biceps tenosynovitis can be a significant pain driver for the shoulder. In such cases where we are unsure as to whether or not the biceps tendon is present, most likely it isn't, but we need to scan down the arm, past the pec major insertion to the muscle bellies. There we can compare the short and long head. As little will occur to the short head muscle belly, this provides a really sound basis to compare the echogenicity of the long and short head. In this instance, we see an echogenic and atrophic long head suggesting a chronic tear of the long head of the biceps that has retracted distally. You can have occasions in which the bicep tendon won't be able to be identified proximally, but you'll see it at the humeral neck. This will be in the context of an acute injury where the tendon has torn but not retracted as the vinculum of the biceps has kept it in place. Usually though, it will retract, producing the Popeye sign, the clinical presentation of a torn proximal long head of the biceps. Is there any spinach in the house? <laughs> In this case, it's a proximal MTJ tear of the long head. The post-operative patient always represents a challenge. In ultrasound, most patients cannot recall exactly what has been done. In these cases, you can bank on a biceps tenodesis. Essentially, the proximal long head of the biceps is cut and reattached to the neck of the humerus. Calcified loose bodies are often seen within the bicep sheath, suggesting a degree of glenohumeral joint osteoarthritis. In this case, it appears as if we have a bifid biceps tendon. However, this is not a bifid biceps tendon, but instead the aponeurotic expansion of supraspinatus, as depicted in the yellow on this schematic and in this cadaver image from Moser. Lastly, we can see echogenic fluid or blood within the long head of the bicep sheath or a hemiarthrosis post-trauma. Once we see this, our approach to the scan immediately changes to one in which we are simply looking for the presence of a fracture. Thanks for listening guys. Like and subscribe for more content.